Hey everyone, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com along with good old JM, Jeff Meacham. We just wrapped up watching WWE Battleground on the WWE Network. Jeff, overall, what did you think of this pay-per-view? Good show. Good uh, show? It, it was good. There were, there were points that surprised me, there were points that didn't surprise me, but I think overall, like I said on, on Periscope earlier, the buzz was really good for this show and, and delivered, I thought. I thought it was an entertaining show. Yeah. There are some things that I found to be questionable and Especially the main event. <laughs> devoid of logic, but we'll get to that. Oh, yes. Let's start off with the pre show match King Barrett versus R Truth. R -Truth. Wade Barrett, in fact, got his win back. He got the win back. No real surprise there. Like I said on both the show we taped on Wednesday and on Periscope earlier, if they're going to have Barrett lose, they might as well just cut have the losses and fire him. Because he, he'll, he'll never get that back losing to Truth that many times. Truth was once a great wrestler. which He still is a good wrestler, but he's a comedy act. And he's, he, he doesn't have any credibility anymore. So for, for the King Barrett to lose the crown to him would have been completely uncombackable from him. Yeah. It makes any sense at all. Hopefully this is the end of the feud. I hope so. I, I hope so. I hope, that, uh, I hope that King Barrett moves on and actually gets to have credible matches with decent workers. Right. Going forward. And then we have the main card. It kicked off with Sheamus, the Money in the Bank holder, losing to Randy Orton. Now, granted, it was in St. Louis, Randy Orton's hometown. Right. With Orton's family at ringside. So, you know, and like you said on Periscope, I think you even mentioned this on the show we did here the other day, that, you know, the Money in the Bank holder tends to lose a lot after he wins the briefcase. So it's no real surprise that Sheamus, you know. I think, I think you and I pretty much picked everything right on the money except for the U.S. title match and the main event, of course. Right. Everything else is pretty... It, it was still a good show, don't get me wrong, but it was very predictable, I thought. Yeah, so uh, Orton versus Sheamus was fairly typical for a Randy Orton-Sheamus match. Yeah, I heard... I, saw, I, I called you out on it on Twitter saying you said it was a fine match. I thought it was okay at best. I don't know about fine, but it was very physical. Both of them beat the crap out of each other. There's no question about that. I don't want to call it a fine match. It was just one of those things that just kind of... They went through the motions. Yeah, I mean, it was entertaining because the crowd mm -hmm. was into it. If the crowd wasn't into it, it would have been a, a nothing match. It's very much like the Hogan-Rock match to a certain extent from WrestleMania 18. If you turn the crowd noise off, that match is dead. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeff didn't like it as much. I didn't. I, I thought it was alright. Um, we have the tag team title match. Primetime players retained the titles as we both predicted against yes. New Day. I, I found New Day to be really entertaining. I loved Xavier at ringside oh, just, I, just with his comments. I thought he was tremendous. I'm I, sad. I'm sad that New Day didn't win the title. People back. are mad at me for picking on New Day during that match. People are mad at me for not, for not wanting New Day to even exist, but... Kofi, my son likes New Day because Kofi's with them. Hmm. If it wasn't for Kofi Kingston, there would be no legitimate New Day faction because Xavier Woods is awful in the ring, and he's not very funny in my opinion. And Biggie is Biggie's been awful from Jump Street. He's not been good since they called him up from NXT. He was a good NXT champion, but he's not been a good WWE main roster guy. And those two are just bringing Kofi down. Again, it's my opinion. I'm entitled to it, okay? So if you don't like my opinion, you don't have to support me or whatever. You can just watch <laughs> the show and tweet me and criticize me or whatever. But New Day sucks, period. And they lost, and it proves it. What about New Day socks that you actually wear on your feet? New Day socks. New Day Spocks. That was funny on Twitter with people just sending me pictures of everything from <laughs> the New funny, Day funny Crocs. Thing is, half people are sending you tweets about New Day whatever rhymes with rocks or sucks. The other half are saying, oh, God, can we stop the tweeting, please? Well, a couple people were, but I think no, most people were enjoying it. You can't you can't please all the people all the time, I guess. Yes. Twitter.com slash no DQ, D-O-T-C-O-M. The live play-by-play -play tweets are always a fun time. Especially during Raw, right? And I was That's I was part. retweeting all these people during the Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns, Reigns match, which, which was bad. Well, nothing technically wrong with it. I thought no. I thought everything they did looked good, but the crowd I don't know, the crowd seemed to at times not care and then towards the end they did get into it. They were they were into Wyatt. I was I was surprised that Luke Harper finally made the jump back into the Wyatt family fold and that we're gonna see once hopefully once Rowan gets better from his injury. We're going to see the wife coming back together where they never right. should have broken up in the first place. Yeah, well, literally, so. there was nothing going on with Harper, so it only made nothing. sense to, to pair him up with Bray again. Well, you remember, they put the two of them back together, and then Ro uh, Rowan got hurt right away, so Harper was in limbo. 
They had to do something with him and quick. Yeah, so this also opens the door for a possible tag team match at SummerSlam. Yes. Or maybe even if uh, Rowan is healthy, they can do the Wyatt Family versus Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Sting. There you go. That's a possibility. Have Sting replace uh, Seth Rollins for the Shield team? Yeah. There you go. So that's a possibility. We'll see what happens with that because, as we all know, there's been the talk about Sting coming back for SummerSlam. Yeah, anything can happen in WWE, as has Vince has said many times over the years. And, you know, if they did a, if they did a tag match, because, you know, some people are critical about a Sting versus Bray Wyatt singles match because people feel that Sting shouldn't be jobbing, but at the same time, Bray shouldn't be jobbing. So if you do a tag match, that way you, you can keep Sting out for most of the match where he doesn't have to carry it. And then you can have somebody like Harper or Rowan take the fall. As long as they do something like that and not have what TNA did with their legend on their team late on 2004 when we went to the pay-per-view where Andy Savage came in the last five minutes of the match, yeah, well, that's I'm, fine. I'm, I'm assuming you know, Sting can just come Sting, in. Sting would probably be in for a good like, here and there, but he wouldn't yeah. be the dominant part of the exactly, match. Exactly, exactly. So we had the Divas match. Um, Which was Oh, God, I'm so happy about this match. Yeah, I mean, I it, wasn't, it wasn't as good as the, the best of the NXT matches, but no. it was still better than any WWE main pay-per-view women's Divas match. match. Divas yeah, match. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. very, in, very, in very recent time. memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlotte and Sasha forced the Bella Twins and all of them. To, I mean, these NXT girls were forcing the roster to step up their game because Triple H is booking them so well in NXT that they're learning that they can they can do better than what WWE has projected on TV the past... God, when did Trish retire? 2006? 2006. Yeah, the past nine years. Yeah. Ever since Trish and Mickey left, it's been... Trish, Mickey, and Lita and all of them left, it's been awful. Yeah. But it's getting better, finally. I liked, and, I liked Bree doing the Daniel Bryan kicks to get That was good. Her. Yeah, yeah. She, she was trying to, trying to get over, and the crowd just shit on her instead of... Freaking hysterical. Yeah, that's great. So that, that was a really entertaining match. I loved how people on Twitter were crapping on JR for calling it a figure four when it's clearly a figure eight. <laughs> clearly a figure eight, people. Well, I got that right at least. Yeah. Well, it's a figure eight. It's what it is. Yeah, I don't I don't call the moves very well, but I was able to get that one correct. Because you're learning, because you're watching an XT riff. We're proud of you for that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, so moving on uh, to the main event matches, we had the... U.S. title match. I was wrong. I predicted 15 Cena kickouts at two. There were only 10, so I was a little bit off. But I was correct in predicting that Kevin Owens would kick out of three AAs. However... Including the super one. The super one. So he got over, folks, but then he tapped out. Well, our buddy Kayfabe Candy Ass on Twitter has been fuming for the past hour or so about the finish of that match, saying, you know, people that say that Owen still looks strong is bullshit because at the end of the day, Owen still lost, and everybody that's lost to Cena gets buried in the long run. You know what? I hope to God he's wrong. I don't like Kevin Owens. I've made that more than clear. But he really showed that he... He, I'm going to piss him off by saying this, but he belongs in the main event picture of WWE. Well, yeah, I mean, I think he's over because people realize he can go at the main event level with guys like John Cena. He proved that He proved that in all the matches. I mean, they worked really well together. I will say that. I, I feel it was redundant with the constant kickouts. I don't think it was as good as the first two matches, but I still thought Kevin Owens really showed that he can play with the big boys. Do you know what Owens proved it to me? What? It wasn't tonight. It wasn't Money in the Bank. It wasn't Elimination Chamber. It was in Tokyo. Yeah. When he and Balor had that phenomenal match the NXT Championship, and he put Balor over clean, and then that horrible tag match came into main event, and people were just like, okay. Yeah. So, what I mean, do you do? for me, Owens is, Owens is ready. He's, yeah. he's been ready. Yeah. For me personally, I would have preferred if this was like more of a, a brawl where they didn't rely so much on near falls and did other things besides what they were doing in the previous well, matches. Well, the, the, the problem is, the previous two matches would have been the time for that. This was a title match. It had to be within the yeah. realm of a title, a rules well, of Well, then title they should have slowly built it up. Like in the first match, they shouldn't have done a lot of near falls. They should have been second one. Did yeah. it be more here? You know. It, I just feel the I feel the second match was probably the best of the three. Oh, it definitely was. It was and that's sucky because that's the one that Cena won the first time. So yeah. if, if Owens' match had been the dominant match, it would have been something. Yeah. So Cena won the feud. I know a lot of people aren't happy about that. Whatever. I mean, Kevin Owens is going to be here. Nobody, he's here to stay. He's he's going to be around for a while. I dare say nobody in the internet wrestling community, if there's even such a thing anymore, is a bigger John Cena fan than me. But I'm not happy that Owens lost either. I think Owens should have won this feud, and, and Cena should have moved on to do something else. Yeah, so, I mean, 
who knows, it'll probably continue. They'll do like a fatal four way at SummerSlam and Owens will win the title. This is our own wrist that very yeah, that works. Yeah. Or maybe maybe Vince just saw Owens backstage with the farmer's tan and said, This guy's not going over my, my I love how you bring up the farmer's tan and like I see twenty people on my tour time I do the exact same thing. I'm like, Well wow. X Pac X Pac actually likes to yeah, said that, did, that yeah. uh, Owen shows he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, I, I love it. well I'll I'll bring up X Pac when we talk about the main event. Go ahead. Okay, well anyways, uh, we had the uh, little uh, filler segment with the Miz coming out dressed as the great Miz Holio, of course. Oh, then, uh, you know, he was ripping Big on, ripping on Big Show, and... saying that Big Show has been missing since the Attitude Era. That was funny. Right. Uh, but then Big Show came out, punched him, and that was the end of it. And then we had the main event, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Really physical match. Tons of suplexes. Brock, they just beat the shit. This was the opposite of Cena and Owens. It was like no near falls. It was no. all just the two of them beating the shit out of each other. Mainly Brock beating the shit out of yeah. uh, Seth Rollins. Suplex Rob. City wasn't a fact. I think it was like 13 or 14. I missed Whatever it was. Miscount. It was I more than yeah. Cena kickouts. It was kick more than the kickouts of Cena. Which, uh, which, which Rollins got a little bit of offense doing the kicks and stuff. But then... And then Brock hits the move and then lights go out. Lights go out. Undertaker appears in the ring. Seth Rollins is completely gone. Undertaker proceeds to hit him with three tombstone pile drivers, choke slam, all that stuff. He is finally, after how long has it been? A year and a half, he decided this was the night to come and get revenge. Not WrestleMania 31, not the Royal Rumble earlier this year, not SummerSlam last year, but now, tonight. And, and see, here's my problem with that whole logic. And I'm going to call Sean Waltman out on this because Sean Waltman said if, if there's ever a way to have a non finish at pay per view, that was it. That's bullshit, X Pac, and I'll tell you why. Undertaker can never, ever, 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 ever get the streak back. He lost at WrestleMania, period. He went down for a three count after three F5s. He lost at WrestleMania 30. He will always be, for now at least, 22 and 1. Right. Number 1. Number 2. Brock Lesnar did not defeat Seth Rollins tonight. Brock Lesnar actually won that match by his qualification when you think about Undertaker interfering. So, at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar is your winner, but not your WWE Champion. What motivation does Undertaker truly have to interfere? He has no way to get the streak back, and he has no title to win from Brock Lesnar. If anything, you're attacking Seth Rollins to get the title. But he yeah. didn't do that. Yeah, why didn't Undertaker just wait until Seth well, Rollins... Somebody won the match, under, whoever it was. And then attack Brock after and, Brock and, won and, the and match. And then attack whoever wins the match. I guess it's personal. It's not about the title. It's personal. Okay, but it should be because if it's personal, then you build a DeLorean and go back in time and fix that part of it. Why is it, why is it so personal? I mean... It was a, it was a it was a uh, sportsman like competition between these two guys and the better man. Both won. of those guys walked out of that match, and even Brock, as cocky as he is shown to be, and Paul Heyman, as cocky as he is shown to be, they walked out of New Orleans in complete shock. Yeah. Both of them. Ro Brock was smiling, but he wasn't cocky smiling. He yeah. was like. Holy crap, I did it! Yeah. He, and the Undertaker walked out like a man. Granted, he collapsed backstage with a concussion, but he still walked out like a champion. Yeah. And now he comes back a year and a half later like a bitch and totally attacks him out of nowhere. Well, may maybe it took him it's a ridiculous. year and a half to heal up. Maybe he had to feel he had to beat somebody like Bray Wyatt first and says, Oh, I, I know. I, I was able to beat Bray, so now I can take out Brock. Dude. Or try to. There is. N and again, Dad's going to not like me for this. Bray Wyatt is not. Brock Lesnar. Yeah. SummerSlam is going to be a rude awakening for the Undertaker, I have a feeling. Now, what happens if Undertaker gets his win back? So that kind of erases the whole point. Oh, this time you built up Brock Lesnar and have, you can have somebody beat Brock Lesnar and get elevated. Yeah, 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 you know, if Undertaker wins that match at SummerSlam, I want to see Vince go on the Stone Cold Podcast again and explain that one to me. I, w I want that explained which is, to me. Which is, I mean, what, how does this story end? Is, is Brock just going to beat him twice? Yeah, there is no right way to end this now. They've yeah. totally fucked up. You know, me. some people out there, it, it, some people out there said it, Undertaker coming back isn't really necessary. It's not. It hasn't been necessary since twenty and zero. Yeah. Everything since then has been about the payday. The Punk match, granted, he was trying to get revenge for the whole Paul Heyman, Paul uh, Paul Bearer thing, but it had to happen in the first place. Punk could have had a decent match with anybody else that night. And then the whole thing with Lesnar should never happen. He should never lost a streak. But, and then Bray Wyatt was completely unnecessary. Yeah. But you know what? Who cares? Because Undertaker's back. Woo! Well, Undertaker's back. Well, and that, that is what WWE's banking on. They're banking on everybody being initially pissed off about a non-finish, but then they're like, oh shit, Undertaker's back. I can't wait to tune to Raw the next night. That's what it's about. Well, and that's fine, but you know what? And, and, and the problem is we're going to have about 20 people on the YouTube comment board and about 30 people on Twitter going, they're just bitching. They just want something to bitch about. Rift and Rift. They're, just, they're just, just nitpicking. Or... The smarks are nitpicking again. But 
I mean, they, they're just being internet kiddies picking on people. Like, yeah, I, I know, I was thing. called a kitty by some yeah, guy. I love that. I retweeted it. That was great. Look, okay. Look, I'm balding. I, I wish I was a kitty. <laughs> Jeff are, has less hair than I do. Yeah, Jeff wears a hat on the shows for a reason, okay? Um, we wish we were kitties. We wish we were kitties. Yeah. We wish we were a teenager's watching that. I wish I was a 14-year-old. There, there is a reason I go on the network every single night and watch Add to Era Raw, because that's when the show was good. I'm watching Undertaker in 1998 just being a badass and saying, no, Austin, I want the title. Not my brother, not mankind. I want the title. And uh, an Undertaker looked old, too. I mean, I hate he to did. nitpick and be a smart. He looked he old, did. too. He I looked mean, Mike, Mike even texted me saying, Undertaker looks really old. Yeah. Mike Nagel, who doesn't watch anymore, you know, he, he he's texting Aaron saying, Undertaker looks old. If, if a casual... The casual fan of Mike Nagel is now is texting us during the pay per view, and if Undertaker looks old. God damn, he looks old. But ultimately, it doesn't matter. Undertaker's back. It's going to generate buzz. If they get four million viewers on Raw, it's going to be a success. That's how if they're they going to see If they get it. the number pop they wanted on the network, they might. The network thing they tonight, might. Then they accomplish Undertaker their goal. might create enough buzz to generate some new subscribers. And if and, that happens, then we're exactly, wrong. Then, then we're totally right. wrong. And I will sit at this desk right here, either facing this way or this way, and admit I was wrong. Because this is professional wrestling, and logic doesn't matter. Well, no, no, no it's sports entertainment. Sports entertainment. Wrestling's a dirty word, remember? It's sports entertainment. At the end of the day, you just gotta be entertained. You gotta check your brain at the door, and it is what it is. You're but, supposed to suspend disbelief, right? You know, I, I figured they would do a screwy finish, and this was probably the best way they could do a screwy finish because people get the Undertaker. Well, yeah, because now Seth looks weak by having to bitch out and not have any involvement in the finish, and Brock looks strong because Undertaker had attacking basically out of nowhere. Yeah. So it works in the short term, but the long term Undertaker storyline is going to be. A I just I just do don't it. know how how you how you have a, a outcome that's going to satisfy people at SummerSlam. You're not going to because if Undertaker wins, then it just erases everything you've done with Brock Lesnar building him up. And if Brock wins, then um, you know what's the point of bringing back Undertaker? I'm telling you right now, they better stack a they better stack a Takeover card in Brooklyn because SummerSlam's not going to be as good a finish as so, Takeover. It's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see how they it's end be very this and if they can satisfy people. With a match at SummerSlam. They were wrong. They were and wrong. the match at WrestleMania did not exactly uh, light the world on fire. So we'll see if this rematch will be better than the WrestleMania match. No, yeah, that, that's the thing. The, the end of the match was the oh my god moment yeah. of the century. But the match itself was piss poor. Yeah. Brock beat him up for 15 minutes. And the, the crowd was just dead. The crowd was the dead end. until the finish. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see what happens so to we'll Brooklyn. See, yep. So there you have it for our thoughts. Leave a comment. Interesting interested to hear what you guys think. I'm curious what they're going to say. YouTube.com slash no DQ CAW. Well, I think it's safe to say we will not get as many dislikes as Noah's videos. Well, see, that's just that's just nitpicking itself because Noah, well, whatever. No, Noah's a good guy. But anyways, guy. that's beside the point. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Check out the other videos. Stay tuned to no DQ.com where I'll have all the latest updates regarding Battleground and what's going on with SummerSlam. No DQ.com. Thank you for being on, Jeff. We will see you guys next time. And by the way, follow him at underscore Jeff Meacham on Twitter. I'm Periscope. Thank you guys for watching.